Week 13, coming off a close win to Seattle, probably closer than I would have preferred. Uh, it was a really big win. We needed to win that. We improved to 7-5, and five, edging away from the Commanders and Eagles in the division, but still just behind the Cowboys. They continue to win. They're 8-4. And, and do we play them at the end of the year? We do not. That would have been big. Yeah, it's right. We played them, I think, what, twice in the first four weeks to start the season. Did we steal one of those? We may have. I think we, I think we may have. But uh, either way, the Cowboys continue to win, and it hurts my feelings. We did learn in the last episode about... The free safety, Glenn Gore. He is up to 100% completion as he was a focus player for us. And we've learned that he is a top five true talent in the draft. B hit power, C man, B tackle, A zone coverage. Physically, very good player. Good to great acceleration, great to elite agility. Good to great uh, speed, which is good. Good to great strength, also good. And uh, the only problem I have with him, because A awareness, A zone, A catching, all looks really good. B hit, hit power, B pursuit, B play rec, B tackle, all looks really good. The only problem I have with him is the struggles to find the ball in the air trait. That sounds a little bad to me, because that's the story of our DBs right now, and we've been cooked at times. Bryson Hendricks is an aggressive ball hawk, for better or worse, also concerning for different reasons. They both have big hitter trait. Hendricks is better in man and less good in zone, but it's still good. Whereas Hendricks is, or excuse me, whereas Gore is better in, in man. He's elite in man, or excuse me, in zone coverage, but worse in man, and even though it's not awful at sea. But that's what we've learned. We will also learn about the defensive tackle at the end of the next, or at the end of this episode in Jorvante Matthews. We'll see if he's a really good value pickup or not. 6'5", 287, speed rusher out of Oregon State, only 21 years old. And if he has really good block shedding and finesse moves, he might be worth a draft pick in the second round. But those two safeties are going to present an interesting challenge for us as we host the 8-3 and three Denver Broncos. That challenge won't obviously uh, be anything we have to think about too much until the actual offseason, which there's quite some time before that. We're still pushing for a playoff spot. Play the Broncos today, as you know, with Russell Wilson. Superstar X Factor 89 overall, or at least playing up to it. He's got very good accuracy. Now, he has ideal sense of pressure. I've, okay. All right, maybe. Well, we'll see how well he plays today. This will be a true test. We haven't really played an elite quarterback in quite some time. Javante Williams, who unfortunately just had a big knee injury in real life, but is going to be very good in the game. He's a really good player in real life when healthy, obviously, as well. 95 break tackle, 91 trucking. Those are concerning things from a defensive standpoint. Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, KJ Hamler. Irv Smith Jr. is in Denver now. I don't like the look of this matchup. Garrett Bowles, Dalton Reisner, Lloyd Cushenberry, Quinn Miners, and Caleb McGarry across the offensive line. It's not elite, but it's a, a decent unit. DJ Jones, Draymond Jones, Tristan Hill, former Cowboy, Carlos Watkins, another former Cowboy, make up their defensive Line with Randy Gregory rushing off the edge. Blake Martinez, the former Giant. I think we also played him last year after trading him. Well, this is the guy we're going to target. He's ass. <laughs> you just throw it, Blake Martinez. All right. So easy strategy there. Josie Jewell. Baron Browning is kind of a beast with Bradley Chubb, another edge rusher. Nick Casa Benito, also uh, off the edge. Patrick Sertan, one of the league's best corners with Michael Ojemudia, Trey Flowers, Damari Mathis maybe playing a little bit. Safeties, of course, one of the best in the league, Caden Stearns, Hook'em Horns. And strong safety is Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who the Eagles traded for in real life, but he hit free agency and signed with the Broncos in-game. So, yeah, he, looks, he looks good. This is a really tough team. You know, it's funny, they're an 82 overall, and they look really really good and then we've seen teams around that same overall who look really really bad overalls you know always a really kind of weird thing uh, but i do want to focus on extending andrew thomas in this episode he's rejected a couple i don't like that but we need this guy long term a four-year contract i'll bump up the money a little bit we need andrew thomas this is our franchise left tackle only 24 years old here in real life, he's developing to becoming one of the best tackles in the entire league. Really, really happy about that as a Giants fan. We'll make him this offer, and Andrew Thomas finally accepts. Welcome back, long-term. 
Tay Crowder is just still not interested in coming back. Same thing with Xavier McKinney and Dexter Lawrence. I really worry about those offseason negotiations. I think the most important player of this bunch to bring back is going to be Xavier McKinney. I know we're looking at safety in the draft, but, you know, potentially moving those guys around is, is an option and we'll probably end up just drafting one. Xavier McKinney signing a long-term extension, I think is going to be really, really important. Uh, our career win percentage is going up, but it's still not great. We had a really, really bad season one, of course, with head coach Gene Dangus. I'd like to bring Xavier McKinney back. I'd like it to be a long-term deal. I am okay overpaying. If I have to, I would give him this contract. Five years, $4.7 million annually with a $3.5 million bonus. Xavier McKinney accepted, I guess. I don't know. He's gone. Disappeared. Did Xavier McKinney accept? You figure he did, right? Yes. Long-term contract. We had to overpay to bring him back, but I don't care, man. He's the lifeblood of our defense in the secondary. We had to we had to let him sign that big contract. We had to or make him. I don't know. We'll eventually end up getting that Super Bowl chase on. You guys know it. We're going to keep developing. We're going to keep getting better. We're going to keep winning. Might not be this year or next year, but we're going to you know keep giving it our all. And Xavier McKinney, I think he's going to be happy he signed back. Now, as far as what this means for the rest of the class, we still have plenty of money. Dexter Lawrence is in here. Melvin Gordon, Tay Crowder, Joe Hayden, Deontay Foreman, who has not seen the field. Kyle Rudolph, who has not seen the field. A bunch of these guys are just the um, the veteran presence, uh, presences, presence. That's a, that's a tough plural. Uh, but the veteran presence for each position that I wanted in the locker room, Lane Taylor, Andy Dalton, John Bostic. That's what these guys all are. Jordan Hicks, to some degree. William Golston, Maurice Hurst. You know, so I'm not really attached to any of these guys other than just having them on the team. The really important ones are Tay Crowder and Dexter Lawrence. Those two are going to be tough decisions. All right, defend medium pass against Russ. We've been doing defend short pass, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll do, we'll do defend medium. Try that out. Maybe it's even better. We'll do half pads for the starters and then offensive game plan. Blitz counter. Yeah, they got some good pass rushers and we've been sacked a lot so we'll go we'll go half pads as well and advance allow two or less passing touchdowns let's do let's bet on ourselves two plus passing touchdowns and we'll limit say allow 24 points or less a little bit worried about that today but we're gonna go for it and uh start training nope that's not what i clicked start training and it looks like the defense is healthy i know a lot of people just skip to the game i don't really understand that because you miss all the buildup. and if you're just if you're just on the channel to watch my gameplay bizarre bizarre but um you probably missed the end of the last episode where larry smith was revealed to have star development Jaden rhodes is maybe a game or two away from having his development trait revealed i think it's probably star but I've heard that big tight ends can have superstar this year down the board, so I'm hoping for that. Derek Cooper is plenty of games away. I'd like to see him play more this week. Maybe we'll try and try and get that going. Quincy Roche with an upgrade. He's still on the team. That's right, yeah. We do have the benefit of being home against the Broncos, so they're coming on the road. It's going to be a little bit more difficult for them. But the big thing is we cannot give them momentum as fireworks shoot out of the solar panels. Yeah, that, that works. That makes sense. I'm sure I've talked about that before. Cody Bailey's numbers, about 3,500 passing yards, 24 touchdowns to 27 interceptions. I'd like the numbers to be better as well. I'd say that at the beginning of every episode, but I'm really not too disappointed about where they are. And I think they should improve a lot today. Blake Martinez is over the middle of the field. It's kind of all I need to say, really. It's Blake Martinez. I'm going to target him every play. And our offense should be unbelievable. And there is D. Coop. I'd like to see him on the field more. I'm going to play him this game. He's going to play a lot. Tay Crowder's future with the team is kind of in flux. We're going to see what Derek Cooper can do. It's a six foot two, 230 pound linebacker with 92 speed. Like there's got to be a place for him. A little shadow action going on here at MetLife. But the rookie who's enjoyed such a great rookie season, a little redundant. I will kick things off, and Denver will take over at the 25. Russell Wilson will take the field. 
Uh, Nathaniel Hack giving him instructions. Russ probably will ignore them. That's kind of his thing. He's had a good season. Over 3,000 yards passing, 34 touchdowns to only eight interceptions. We'll see what he does today. First and 10. Russ just going to go ahead and check down. And there's Derek Cooper kind of diving past him. But a swarm of giants take him out. It's Kramer. Jordan Hicks into the game. Thought we took him out. We're going to hit Russell Wilson. But he gets the football out, completes it. And you can see he took a shot there from Jordan Hicks. No, Jordan Hicks actually dove past him. I know, former Texas legend, but get him off the field. Why is he playing? It's also possible Derek Cooper's just off the edge here. But where's Azizo Jalari in that case? Gonna go ahead and get Aziz back on the field. Gonna go man coverage here on second and 10. And that's gonna be a completion to Jerry Judy. Adoree Jackson just, I don't know, got out of position. Judy cut in front of him and then had the uh, the wheels to turn it into a touchdown. I, I was not even ready to commentate that because I wasn't even, wasn't even ready for it. Yeah, I mean, it, Judy just breakaway speed, I guess. Over 20 miles per hour, Adoree just couldn't get to him. All right, offense going to take over after an inauspicious start, to say the least, from the defense. I don't even know. I felt like we played okay, and then suddenly it was 7-0. Cody Bailey will take the field. I'm looking for a big game today. Come on, Cody. Show me what you got. Yards are good. We pass a lot. But uh, we need to be better today. Best game of your career. Come on, Cody. Let's do it. Doesn't mean we are not going to see uh, Saquon Barkley, though. He gets 10 plus right out the gate. Rhodes in motion. And we'll work off play action here. It's Cody Bailey. We're going to throw it off his back foot. Why is that always the anime? I think it's just an animation. I don't think it's actually off his back foot because it doesn't say like back foot throw. It's a good accuracy touch pass. Tried to put it up for Odell. Thought he could go run underneath it, but the safety was there. And it is second down and 10. As we're going to be under pressure, Bailey! Wrapped up by either DJ or Draymond Jones. I think DJ Jones is 97. Third and 14. Kind of a little give up run there. Just, uh, it's tough to convert. And we're just going to play to punt. I know that seems awful. But third and 14, uh, it's already a 7-0 game. Don't want to risk an interception, give them great field positioning. And then, uh... You know, be down 14 nothing in a blink or in the blink of an eye. So, uh, we're just gonna play it a little bit safe. I know that's probably gonna be unpopular, but it just had to happen. I know the give up runs are never, they're never good looking. I ha I hate them, but I'm gonna play a little bit conservatively early on, and hopefully we reap the rewards later. That's popped up into the air. Good coverage from Adoree Jackson. The fact that Jerry Judy was able to nearly even make a catch on that make a play on the ball is unbelievable julian love couldn't bring it down second and 10 russell wilson will throw it away and we'll see if our decision to punt pays off third and 10 going deep darnay right there he can't bring the football down tried to swat it sutton go ahead and breaks another tackle and finds the end zone and it's a uh, it's two big time scores for the broncos from both of their receivers they did it in different ways, too. Sutton goes up and gets it, breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle on his way into the end zone. Judy, of course, just caught a ball, a ball underneath and just ran for, you know, 70 yards. Sutton, just a huge play. Just like that, 14-0 Denver. All right. All right, yeah, down 14-0. Kind of just been uh, one of those starts, unfortunately. Now the give-up punt seems stupid. But uh, what are you going to do? I mean, they, they threw at Darnay Holmes, who is 5'10 on stilts. And like the 6'3", 6'4", Cortland Sutton just made a play. I, I, what are you going to do? Because we're under pressure already. Second and 10. Oh, I don't like it. Third and 10. I, I don't like any of these options. Oh my goodness, Bradley Chubb bringing down Cody Bailey. I just feel like they keep running man coverage and I feel like we're not beating man coverage right now. 
Then we're going to take over on offense. I, I, I'd like to get the football out quicker. We need routes that don't take as long to develop. That's for sure. But they got to get open. I don't know. Second and seven. Blitzing. It's Javante Williams and Tate Crowder brings him down. We will see him today, but I wanted to get Derek Cooper on the field a little bit more. It is third and seven. We're going to change to his own coverage here. And it's going to be a deep shot. And it's going to be a touchdown. Oh, man. Cortland Sutton. Our guys just didn't... Uh, didn't react well to the last second defensive change. And they had two vertical routes on the field. They were trying to get it all. And Xavier McKinney, obviously, uh, we were going for the pass breakup. So it, it just didn't work. Cortland Sutton just beat him. Corners playing shallow. It, it, ended up being just, it ended up being Xavier McKinney having to take away two vertical routes on one side of the field. And he just doesn't have the speed in game to be able to do that. And we were down 21 nothing with five minutes to go in the first quarter. I don't, I don't even want to get the football back, man. We can't do anything. We can't. Our defense has been ass. We've got our work cut out for us. Need to get some of this momentum back. Decent block from Mizudu, but couldn't get by him. Second and eight. Good blocks. Saquon Barkley, break a tackle. Let's go, Saquon. Going to be close to the first down. Third and one. Yeah, read option is going to work perfectly here. Hold A to keep it. I can't even snap it. Or hold A to uh, give it to Saquon is what I meant. I didn't do it. And uh, Cody Bailey is shut down. I would normally punt in this situation, but it's fourth and one and we're down 21. A lot of game left, but we got to trust Saquon Barkley to pick it up in these spots. And that's exactly what happens. Cody Bailey has yet to complete a pass. Try to screen there. Uh, they were screaming down our, our throat there in a second. Jaden Rhodes, that's a big broken tackle. Dude, I don't know what it is, but it's like whenever I try to do a skill move in space, they register twice. It's happened with trucks there. It it happened with jukes uh, earlier, not in this game, but in, in, in other games. I think I remember it in the running back video where I followed the career of a generational running back. Did it in that video. I don't know if it's the Xbox Elite controller or Madden, but it is annoying. That's what I know it is for a fact. We're going to lob it up. Nick Duvall can't bring it down. Uh, I, I lose track of the buttons. And they don't show them on the field, which is annoying at first. Play action. They read it. They read it. Randy Gregory brings down the quarterback. And that is our third time being sacked this game. I just, why, why be fooled one time? Third and 17. Throw it, Blake Martinez. That's exactly what we do. Good catch, Nick Duvall. Chains move. And we can finally get back to, to just a better offense here. We keep getting caught in like third and, and second and long as Saquon will have a nice run. I don't want to be in, in second and third and long. That's when we're forced to throw. That's when we're more susceptible to being sacked. It's the end of the first quarter. We're down by 21, but we have a chance to make it a two-possession game. We need a touchdown here. Let's get a block. Oh, there we go. Number 11 made the wrong decision. And you know who number 11 is? It's Blake Martinez. He had the opportunity to bring down Saquon there. Because it looks like they're going to be super ready for the run. It's not coming. Jaden Rhodes has fallen down. And will throw it away. He wasn't blocking. He was on a route and he just got pancaked. And I've accidentally called a timeout. Why is replay not up? It's always the second option. Oh my god, dude. But yeah, Jaden Rhodes, hey, let's run a drag. Nope, he ran into Andrew Thomas, and he's out of the play. It's always something, man. It is always something. Third and five. Give Odell a chance. It's intercepted. It's a high point on a fade. How is it underneath? Saquon saves a touchdown. No, explain that to me. Explain it to me. It's a fade. The whole design of the play is give your receiver a chance. I throw a high point to get the ball up. I just don't... I How am I ever supposed to throw a fade in this game? It never works. The It never works. How do we make him... It, I want a chance. Fun interception. This game's off to a really fun start. Really fun. Second and five. I dare you to check down. I dare you. It's Derek Cooper. Big hit. 
He's got 85 hit power, which is A grade for an outside linebacker or any inside linebacker in the draft. We moved him to outside linebacker. Wish it could ever be in the 90s. I don't even know how you upgraded. I don't really see that as a thing that gets upgraded too often. Maybe it does. 85 seems a bit low for A, but whatever. Third and five. Quick throw. Thank goodness Jerry Judy dropped the ball. Our DBs didn't make a play on it. They didn't. Judy just dropped it. I mean, they were, we were close. It probably contributed to the drop. We needed to force a turnover, and a punt is a turnover. That interception is mind-boggling to me still. It's crazy that fades don't exist. Maybe I have to do precision passing and put it in an exact particular spot. So, like, what's the skill gap on throwing the ball up? It's dumb. Going five wide. Quick throw to Nick Duvall. There we go, Nick. That's what we have to do. Nick Duvall is basically a cheat code with his, with his size and speed. Just got to feed him. Second and eight. Uh, yep. Third and eight. We're going to leave Saquon in the block here. All right. Third and eight. Going deep to Odell. We, just, there, we don't have a chance. I don't know how 50-50 balls are completable. I see it happen in Ultimate Team. You guys got to remember, Ultimate Team's all pro difficulty. The stuff that works in, in Ultimate Team and online is not stuff that works against the CPU, especially with the sliders when coverage is boosted up. Um, but, yeah. It's unfortunate. I just don't get... We don't get animations. This is such an animation-driven game, yet my receivers do not ever animate to go for the football. That's what is confusing to me. Okwa Ibanam, big gain. Jesus. We're going to get smashed today. It's it's going to be a good old-fashioned fashion Giants franchise ass-kicking. That's what's going to happen. Down goes Wilson. Finally, something happens. Kayvon Thibodeau. His 12th sack of the year here in, what, week 13? It's pretty good pace. About one a game. Remember, we haven't had our bye week yet. Second and 16, we're in a good spot. We can't give them these yards back. Underneath, and it's intercepted! The king of New York, the Don, kiss the ring! Dontrell Cobb interception, easy reads, green eggs and ham. Easy reads for Dontrell Cobb playing underneath. Downhill, trigger underneath Cortland Sutton, interception. And it was a much-needed turnover. Wide open. Barkley out of the backfield. We got it to him. Saquon beat Justin Simmons. Saquon Barkley inside the five. How do you not have the speed to beat Justin Simmons? It's got to be a touchdown. Either way, it's a big gain. Barkley uncovered out of the backfield. All it had to be was a little dump off. They blitzed. When you do that, you leave receivers uncovered. This time, it was the back out of the backfield, of course. And I would have loved for that to be a touchdown. Instead, it's a big gain regardless. And we needed it. We needed it so bad. So badly. Let's get it to Barkley. First and goal. Little juke. Somehow a defender makes a play. Second and goal. Duval! Toe drag! Touchdown! There's a high point. Guess you got a high point to your six foot four tight end. Oh, he's wheeling and dealing. Nick Duvall with the Ric Flair celebration. And that's a great play. I mean, you should. He took a big hit at the end of that play, but he went up and he got it. He did the double toe tap. And Simmons was just too late. Big touchdown to get on the board here. About time. About time. We're still down by a ton, 21 to 7. But we've we've seen life. We have life. Second and two. We're not going to run. Looks like slants. Wilson looking for space. Can't find it. Had a receiver coming across the field. Instead, he finds Kayvon Thibodeau. Second sack of the game for Thibodeau. And it's not even a question of uh, not having enough time. He had enough time. Russ just didn't get rid of the football. You can see that crosser, that slant coming across the field. It was open. Russell Wilson just didn't throw it because Derek Cooper was never getting back to make a play on that. No way. It was never going to happen. Get over the middle. Wilson throwing it deep. Julian Love in coverage. Thankfully, it's a big hit from Adoree Jackson. Love did a great job of getting out of position. 
And they're gonna call defensive pass interfere on Julian Love. He got out of the way. Oh my God, what is what is this? What is this game? It's first and 10 for Denver. Give him every advantage, please. Oh, it, how is that not a pick? It's going the other way. Oh, we gotta settle down. Settle down. To run, you gotta make that tackle. Broken tackle, Dontrell Cobb can't bring him down, finally. Darnay Holmes does, and Holmes brings him down for a loss. That's Kramer, who's been pretty active today. I haven't really seen a ton of Javante Williams, but we've seen a ton of Kramer. It's an episode of Seinfeld. He's walking through the door. Third and 11. Wilson on the run. Where's Darnay Holmes? Good defense from McKinney. Just signed a big contract extension and just made a big play. I know he was semi-responsible for the touchdown earlier. I wouldn't put that on him. It was a bad play call. We accidentally ended up in, in cover two on that, which if you guys didn't know, like X and RB used to be cover three in every single Madden game, except for this one where it's just cover two for some reason. They switched left bumper and right bumper. Uh, really stupid in my opinion, because, you know, oh, let, let me quickly go to cover three. I don't like man coverage here. And then your CBs play in the flat, which is uh, extremely frustrating. Like that's a, a little thing that they changed for no reason. I don't know why they would have done that, but it, it's maybe just to fuck with me. What else could it be? Duval wide open. Let's go, Nick. Let's go, Nick. Takes us to the two minute warning. We just gotta feed our best offensive playmaker. And I know it sounds crazy, but it's Nick Duval. He leads a team in catches and receiving yards. And I do throw the ball to him a lot, but we get the best results when we do. I'm trying to throw it, that probably was a mistake. So good. Third and 14, a minute and a half to play in the first half. I'm having a problem with receivers getting open. That's open enough. Larry Smith, nice catch in traffic. And is that an injury for Gardner Johnson? No, maybe he's just injured. His, his uh, ego is bruised after kind of allowing that play to happen. A Saquon's gonna cut it back, get it a couple of yards. We have a minute to score a touchdown. That's what we're, pr we're playing for. A field goal isn't the worst, but we're playing for the touchdown, clearly and it's an interception. I, I tried to lead that down. <laughs> Haven't had one of those brain dead picks in a minute. I tried to lead it down and away from the safety. I saw the safety coming down. I saw it the entire way, which is what's most frustrating is I saw it the whole time. I chose to throw it anyway. I passed lead down and you can see when I start the throw, I'm just expecting the ball to be here. I didn't precision pass it, but Duval's double covered. Tony's not open. This is not open. We're about to be sacked. I don't know, it's just tough. Everyone's covered and we had to get the football out. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I just tried to throw it underneath where Beckham could shield away and it just ended up being thrown perfectly to Justin Simmons. Second interception of the game. Really couldn't afford that one. Just gotta play better. We got a whole second half though. Two picks for Cody Bailey. Frustrating as they always are. Dory Jackson, go up and get it. All right, that works. But look at this. See how LB is cover three and Tampa two cover two is RB. Why would they change that? Why would they? Third and four, are they gonna really try and convert here? I mean, they, they're going to. Wilson, is he gonna throw it? He's going deep. Please, Adori. Yeah, good, good play on the ball. 21 seconds. If we can get to midfield with two timeouts, we all know why Anthony can drill the field goal. Uh, we're going to try it. We're going to try it. All right, second and inches. Duval's just wide open. The fact that we can't get out of bounds on that is so bad. Six seconds and no timeouts to get in the field goal range is just not doable. It just isn't. The only thing I'd be comfortable with is having Larry Smith and Tony clear out and then Duval on the outside. But we're just not gonna have time to make that work. It's zone coverage. Going deep down the field, Odell, make a play. Well, that would have been disgusting, but doesn't end up counting. Kind of a rough half for Cody Bailey, nine for 21, 146 yards, two interceptions. The Broncos just outplayed us. Their defense was, I think, really tough. And their offense, obviously, I mean, they have 24 first half points. Not great. We do get the football to start the second half. 
We're down by a lot, but I don't think we're out of it yet. We just need to make fewer mistakes. We got our mistakes out of the way. That's fine. Let's uh, let's move the football, but we got to do it a little bit quickly. 12 rushes for 73 yards on the day for Saquon Barkley. Going to be some more here. If we can do that every play, there's no reason to call a pass play the entire second half. We will take 10 yards a snap every single time. The problem is that is uh, not always doable. Melvin Gordon into the game on second and six. He's going to get a carry. Good block from Glowinski. Gordon can't turn it into a first down, but does turn it into a very reasonable third down and two. And I don't really want to run against this. Maybe run right. Can't run right. I, I'd, I'd rather pass. I hate, I hate passing. Only ends in pain. Barkley, basically a run. You gotta make a miss. We couldn't do it. Oh my goodness. Why would I punt in this spot? It's fourth and two from midfield down 24 to seven. No way. Fourth and two underneath. It's Odell Beckham Jr. Kind of the only way we seem to be able to get him the ball on those drags. So uh, we'll do it. The drag cheese. Yes. Let's do it more. First and 10. Duval open. Blake Martinez should not be that close. Look at Duval though. Throwing off Bronco defenders. Third and four. Once again, feels like four down territory. We're going to cut it back. I don't know how we can't turn that into a first down. It seems like there's so much space. Fourth and inches. Barkley with space and plenty. After the first down, we move the chains. He's got 106 rushing yards already. Melvin Gordon into the game. Had a touchdown a week ago. We got good blocks. Melvin Gordon. He's just a machine. I hate how whenever I call a play two times in a row, it takes me to the recent play screen as opposed to the coach suggestions where I like to sit. Very annoying. Third and two. Underneath. Kind of crazy timing on those crossers, but we get it to Larry Smith with no, uh, no deflection. I don't know if you see what I see. But I don't see any safety help. One-on-one -on -one for Nick Duvall. Feels like a good play. Going up, and we got it to him! Simmons all over him. Doesn't matter. You're not 6'4". Cody Bailey puts it up in the air, and Nick Duvall comes down with it. Would have been furious with an interception here. Would never be mad about an incompletion. But the crazy interceptions are what frustrate me. Thankfully, Simmons didn't even go for it, but he couldn't get his hand to it. Second touchdown of the game for Nick Duvall. He's just a cheat code. Just put the football up. He's going to make plays. It's a 10-point game, provided I can actually hit this extra point. Yeah, we do. 24-14. Denver only has six rushing yards. Javante Williams back in the game, and it is not going to go to him. Unbelievable. It goes to Tim Patrick. Yeah, well, wasn't ready for that, I'll tell you that much. Jet sweep to Tim Patrick is not something that was on my bingo card. Second and two. It's gonna be a run. Dontrell Cobb is there. Cracks Javante Williams, and he didn't get the first down. I thought for sure they were gonna have it. It's third and inches. Is this a run? Sure could be. Oh, it's gonna be a pass. And it's gonna be a completed pass. No! It's dropped by Tim Patrick. I don't know why. Tim Patrick could not haul it in. It was a good pass. It was a for sure first down. And instead, we get the football back. Oh, that's so huge. We have to convert. Anytime you get a little lucky, you have to take advantage. Now, we're running behind Jaden Rhodes. Odell's got to pick up a good block for us. Saquon broke a tackle. Turns it into two. Unlikely two yards. A little RPO action. Quick throw to Duvall. We can't keep getting that animation. I don't like the turnaround when you're wide open. Maybe a touch pass? A touch pass is probably the move there. That's the eighth catch of the game for Nick Duvall. I hate the idea of slants here as well. But Duvall's wide open. Why throw to anybody else? Mm, stop throwing to Nick Duvall. No, never. He's a hero. Start of the fourth quarter. Odell open underneath. I really would like to get him more involved. He's had a decent season for us, by the way. He's had a decent season. It's really not too bad. It just has not been elite by any means. As we got to check down here, it's Kadarius Tony. Good catch and run from Tony. 
All right, get, snap, uh, get set, snap the ball. Don't like it. Stepping up with Bailey, and we get sacked. One of these tight ends is going to get open for sure. Jaden Rhodes did break a tackle. We don't really get anything, though. That's trying to get rid of the ball a little bit too quickly. Now, we don't absolutely need to, uh, to score a touchdown here. We just need to not turn over the ball. Wide open. It's Nick Duvall. I love this guy. Nick Duvall, all he does is make plays. He's always open. Duvall. First down. Do we throw it to him again? Do we throw it to him? Probably not. We're going to go to Odell. I I'm telling you, I wanted to. Probably made a better decision. First and goal. Barkley handoff. Okay, that was weird. Mark Lewinsky made an inhuman movement. Check this out. Lewinsky pulled on the play. I'm trying to read his block. And then look at that. He basically gets juked with Saquon. And that it's always something. Come on, Saquon. Neil, good block. Barkley, we got to power through him. Third and goal. We're going to try a run again. Good blocks, and Saquon Barkley walks in virtually untouched. It's a big rushing touchdown for Barkley. It's going to be a three-point game. We've brought it all the way back. 24 first quarter points for the Broncos. A goose egg since then. Saquon's, I believe, sixth rushing touchdown of the year. This one comes at a pretty big time. Six and a half to play. That's just good play design. Take the linebacker away. Throw it underneath to where he would have been. Russell Wilson, only 10 completions. That's his 10th. But three touchdowns. Let's blitz the hell out of him. Cooper go down. Oh, it's a run. I thought it was play action. Williams to the second level. Big tackle by Xavier McKinney. That's only his fourth carry the entire game. Excuse me for thinking they wouldn't run the ball there. I guess they do have a lead in the fourth quarter, but it's only his fourth carry. I mean, that's crazy. Second and inches. Oh, no. Completed on Adoree Jackson to Jerry Judy again. We've seen that quite a few times this game. That's a really good catch in traffic. We keep blitzing. We got to get a turnover or something. We don't have to. Forcing a field goal is good enough. It's a nice play by Xavier McKinney again. Second and five. Over the middle and incomplete. That was a good try. Because it was open. Cooper just uh, couldn't get there. Thankfully, Russell Wilson couldn't make the throw. Third and five. Three and a half minutes to play. Just going to check down. No. Wilson going to throw. Dory Jackson right there. And he ripped the ball out. He had it in his hands. Could have been a touchdown. Dory Jackson makes a big play. Forget about what happened early in the game. He needed you to make a play. He made a play. And Brandon McManus kicks the field goal. It's good, but that doesn't really hurt us. Not too much. Touchdown would put us on top. One final drive here. And we can come away with the win. Under three and a half minutes to play. Control the clock. Also, there is a receiver wearing number 10. It's Randall Cobb who signed in free agency. Eli Manning's number is retired. And, you know, it's, it is what it is. We'll uh, get that off him. There's Kadarius Tony. You know, we don't have to exclusively run the ball here, but it wouldn't be the worst idea. They keep suggesting that we pass, but we gotta we gotta think about this game. We're down, yeah, but. We don't, we're not like down, down. We got the football. Touchdown wins the game. We don't really want to give them time to score. We need to, uh, we need to play this wisely. And I think another Saquon run is exactly what we need. There he goes. Close line, but first down. A draw here. Got a good Duval block. It's another good Saquon run. He's going to be close to 150 today. Second and one. Saquon, you got to get that. I think he did, yep. All right, a minute and 20. Come on. Saquon, use that speed. It's a broken tackle from Barkley. Saquon into Denver territory for real this time. We were on the borderline. Saquon takes us way in. Melvin Gordon into the game now. Still first down. A little check down to, to uh, Kadarius Tony. Good block from Duval. Tony still trucking. 
We're down to the 12. Another run. Got a block. Barkley takes it down to the eight. We'll call a timeout. 26 seconds to play. Bailey from under center. Bunch right for the Giants. Handoff goes to Barkley. He breaks a tackle. Saquon pushing forward down to the two. It's first and goal Giants. The individual effort from Saquon Barkley to avoid disaster in the backfield. Push forward, showcase the strength, the elusiveness, and get down to the two. Here's first and goal. Handoff to Barkley. He's fighting and he got it. Touchdown, Barkley. His second of the day. This one couldn't have come at a bigger time. Love saying it because it stays true. Saquon Barkley could have just put us on top here with less than 20 seconds to play. We'll need a Wyatt Anthony extra point. Here it is. Extra point up and good. The Broncos will have 16 seconds and three timeouts to get into field goal range, but that is a big, big, big comeback for this Giants team. 16 seconds. Do not, I mean, we can't let them beat us deep, for sure, but we also can't just let them get 20 or 30 yards. They could easily get into field goal range here, and a field goal would win the game. We just need to limit. This can't be a 20 yard catch. That's okay, I guess. The clock stops. How nerve-wracking is this right now? We're trying to complete a nearly impossible comeback. You gotta wrap up. Wrap up. It's Javante Williams in space. That broken tackle, that decision from Russell Wilson to check down, may have just lost them the game. Field goal. Now out of the question. They'll have one shot at the end zone, and that'll decide the game. Wilson looking to scramble. He evades Thibodeau. Wilson's on the move. He's going to need a miracle. And a miracle won't happen. He rushes for 31 yards and is well short of the end zone. Game over. Comeback completed. And the Giants' season stays alive. Boy, does it ever. 28-27. Giants with a huge comeback. It looked like we were going to get crushed in the first half. And in the second half, we were a different team. Look at the score summary. We didn't have the lead one time apart from the final 30 seconds of the game. Russell Wilson played pretty well. Three touchdowns, did throw a pick. Lurking with Dontrell Cobb, 286 yards, 115.1 QBR. But Cody Bailey, 23-35, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Not great. Rushing, it was this guy. 32 carries. For 175 yards, two touchdowns, broke nine tackles. Nick Duvall as well, man. He's unbelievable. 10 catches for 111 yards and two touchdowns. Odell, four for 28. A number of receivers got involved a little bit. 33-yard uh, catch and run there for Saquon. Ah, yes, out of the backfield, the swing uncovered. And uh, yeah, we just, we fought back. We fought back. Nobody had over four tackles. Two for loss for Thibodeau, including two sacks. Those were the two sacks. And an interception for the rookie, Dontrell Cobb. Unbelievable game. Unbelievable. Ooh, both tackles with an upgrade. Evan Neal has good run block. Pass block's got to be in the 80s. Pass protector it is. He jumps up to an 82 overall temporarily, really an 80. Pass block by one. That's good. Finesse and power also go up by one. Doesn't get an ability slot until 85. Secure Protector, I think, is the move. He's been locked down. I mean, Evan Neal's barely allowed any sacks here in 2023 the entire season. And then Andrew Thomas is all the way up to an 82, which is higher, or actually, actually what he actually is in uh, the real life rosters, which will be even higher, even though this is, you know, a year and a half later. But I'm gonna do power. That jumps him up to a true 83, 84 overall temporarily. Pass block goes up by one. I really wanted to get run block up. Not this time. But we are somehow an eight-win team. Some really, really close wins and losses in the past three or four or five weeks. But uh, we're doing enough. Don't tell me my franchise is glitched here. 
Hopefully it just disconnects me and then doesn't reset me to the draft. I know a lot of people have had that issue. I've talked about this, uh, how I fixed it. And you go back and watch the episodes. That's all I can tell you. I've talked about it. I've talked about what I did to fix it in the Gildangus explanation one. That was a step that I took. If you skip around, you're going to miss things that you want to know. Okay, we've made it to our bye week. I had to restart the app, but I'm trying to see... Alexander, or Alexander Aubel moves down a spot. New QB1 is Nick Gordon with D short accuracy. I don't know about that. Any other movement on the board? William Oglesby up one slot. Richard Fletcher is down one. But let me see this defensive tackle. That's what I want to know about. He was our focus player. He should be up to 80%. And it really, it didn't help me out a ton. Because he had A to C block shed right? And then he had A to C finesse moves. Somehow block shit has changed from C to D. Makes no sense to me, but I guess it should be a C, right? So, I guess it should be a C. And then finesse moves, we don't know anything more about that. That is like th the worst 80% ever. But it's all good. That's going to do it for this episode. Cowboys were on a bye, so they still are currently better than us. Better winning percentage at 8-4 and four compared to our 8-5. and five. We just got to keep winning. Uh, we'll play the 49ers in week 15, but that's going to do it for me. Uh, actually, let's do the bye week. What do we want here? Coach, your second place in your division and getting some time off this week with the bye. Any special plans for the week off? Stay grinding. Stay grinding. Give me that XP. Need to be firing on all cylinders coming out of the buy, so we're sticking to the grind. I don't want these guys rusty or sluggish because of time off, and I think keeping the routine will help. I think that's a fair uh, argument. Plus 500 XP for the team. Minus 7 stamina. That's not great, but we're going to be better long term because of it. Week 15, we take on the 5 and 8 Niners, but they're going to be better than the 5 and 8. Cowboys improved to 9 and 4. It's going to be tough to win the division. It's going to be tough. And the Niners are going to be a really tough team to beat. They're an 85 or 84 overall, I should say. And uh, they're going to be a problem. Bears are the best team in the league. We have their first round pick. We need them to lose. And currently, uh, no one has clinched a playoff spot. Still a lot of time left. But we will be fighting for a wild card, it looks like. Or the division. Just got to keep winning. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.